Today's Encore. Ah, uh, cool. The stories behind the songs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's iHeartRadio's Miles Galloway. Time goes by so slowly, except for when you're listening to new episodes of Encore. I'm Miles Galloway, and this is the story of Madonna's Hung Up. She is both the queen of pop and the queen of reinvention. She's the most successful female solo artist of all time with more than 300 million records sold. In one word, she is Madonna. It's safe to say that without Madonna, we wouldn't have the likes of Britney Spears, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, Dua Lipa, or insert the name of any up-and-coming pop star that interests you. One could argue that Madonna is the most influential icon of her generation. Emerging from New York City's underground in the early 80s, it was as if a bomb went off in the world of pop music with her arrival. Almost immediately, Madonna would change music's landscape with her music while grabbing headlines with her controversial opinions, outfits, and actions. She was everything a female pop star wasn't and becoming everything a female pop star wanted to be. To quote a New York Times piece from 2019, Madonna was a highly autobiographical, uber-empowered, hyper-sexualized female pop star who became the dominant model of femininity across the nation. She should use that in her Instagram bio. She's always been pop culture's chameleon, shape-shifting and transforming herself with each album to reflect current trends and her latest fascinations, from Marilyn Monroe and sadomasochism to ballroom culture and uh, cone-shaped bras. I'm wearing one now. Her unwavering confidence allowed her to speak out against social injustices like homophobia and the stigma surrounding the AIDS crisis, and take on governing bodies like the Catholic Church and the US government. And while her 1980s contemporaries lost relevance with the dawn of the 1990s, Madonna's influence only grew stronger. She used her status to push the envelope even further, with salacious projects like her banned book simply titled Sex, or her banned single Justify My Love, but also by continually reinventing herself. From the Marilyn Monroe ping material girl to a whip-cracking dominatrix in The Girly Show to political activist Eva Peron in Evita to hot pink leotarded disco queen. Madonna ended the 90s remaining one of the world's biggest artists with perhaps her best album, Ray of Light, which flirted with electronic music and integrated the teachings of Kabbalah. As the 90s came to a close and gave way to the new millennium, Madonna would be the mother of two children and be married to English filmmaker Guy Ritchie. But that didn't slow her down. She was still on top of the world. She won a Grammy for number one single, Beautiful Stranger, her contribution to Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, and topped the charts again with her cover of Don McLean's American Pie. Madonna would then follow that up in 2000 with the album Music, which saw her once again reading the zeitgeist and scoring big, with an album of kaleidoscope, dance pop and electronica that saw her return to the top of the Billboard 200 for the first time in 11 years. On top of that, she was cast as a lethal fencing instructor in the James Bond film Die Another Day, for which she sang the title track. There was quite simply no stopping her. In April 2003, Madonna released her ninth album, American Life. The lead single was the title track, a pointed hot take on the emptiness of commercialism, pop culture and American values. Yes, it featured the cringiest white girl rap imaginable, but once again, Madonna was living up to her reputation and criticizing the status quo. The song's accompanying video was an anti-war statement that created controversy, but Madonna decided to pull the video and replace it with one that was less polemic. Unfortunately for Madonna, both the song and the album were considered a commercial flop. Despite selling 4 million copies worldwide, American Life was the worst performing album to that point of her career. For the first time in 20 years, Madonna was facing potential irrelevance. In an interview with ABC, she explained that there was a lynch mob mentality that was going on that wasn't pretty, and I have children to protect, and I just didn't think it was the right time. Of course, being the most provocative pop artist of her time, it didn't exactly take long for her to bounce back, because no one knows how to grab headlines like Madonna. Two months after releasing American Life, Madonna performed at the 2003 MTV Video Music Awards and did this. Yo, 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 who that be? Yep, she made out with pop music's two biggest stars, Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. Those kisses were talked about for days, weeks, months. Even last year, some social media outlets celebrated its 20th anniversary. Spoiler alert, we were technically one of those outlets, with season two of Encore's first episode detailing Britney Spears' toxic. You're welcome. 
American Life's poor performance didn't stop Madonna from having the highest grossing tour of 2004, but once again, it didn't come without its hitches. She was reportedly paid $10 million by CBS to televise a concert from the Reinvention World Tour, which never actually happened. And then she was sued by a director for failing to pay him to direct a similar TV special scheduled to air in Europe. Instead, Madonna released a tour documentary shot by collaborator and YouTube videographer Jonas Ackerland called I'm Going to Tell You a Secret, which received mixed reviews from critics. Madonna was later nominated for Best Live Act at the Q Awards, which seemed to baffle attendee Elton John. On stage at the awards, he said, Madonna, best f***ing live act? F*** off. Since when has lip syncing been live? Anyone who lip syncs in public on stage when you pay £75 to see them should be shot. That's me off her f***ing Christmas card list, but do I give a toss? No. Madonna's publicist denied that she lip-synced and added that Elton John would remain on her Christmas list whether he's nice or naughty. On top of all of that, Madonna and her record label Maverick sued Warner Music for breach of contract, accusing them of mismanagement and improper accounting. The case was eventually resolved when Warner agreed to purchase the remaining shares of Maverick from Madonna and her partners, though she would still remain with Warner as an artist. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? Who's Madonna right now? Um, she's a girl that wants to have fun, <laughs> um, wants to dance, um, a girl who's very happy about life and wants to be joyful, positive. Yeah. Is, is the mood of the world, uh, earthquakes, floods, wars? Well, that's one of the reasons I, yes, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons I, I feel that way because there's so much pain and suffering going on in the world right now and I feel like people need to have their spirits lifted. So, and I do too. (laughs) When Madonna began working on her next album, she needed to make a change. She reconnected with producer Mer Wace, who helped produce both American Life and her wildly successful 2000 album, Music. Looking to leave the serious tones of American Life behind her, the two recorded a few tracks together before Madonna realised it wasn't heading in the direction she wanted. She told Billboard, Mer Wace is also very political, seriously cerebral and intellectual. And all we did was sit around talking politics all the time, so that couldn't help but find its way into the music. I think there's an angry aspect to the music that directly reflects my feelings at the time. I think I needed a release from the seriousness of it all. It wasn't just about getting away from the politics, though. Madonna wanted to do a complete 180 and have a good time, like she did in the early days. In an interview with MTV, she said, I was angry. I had a lot to get off my chest. I made a lot of political statements, but now I feel that I just want to have fun. I want to dance. I want to feel buoyant, and I want to give other people the same feeling. There's a lot of madness in the world around us, and I want people to be happy. At that point, she was also involved in two other projects. One was a stage play called Hello Suckers, which didn't reach any stage of development other than forming the basis of a few songs she would release later on. The other was a feature film musical starring Madonna and directed by Luc Besson, who collaborated with her on the video for Love Profusion from American Life. Besson gave her a script for a musical set across a number of different eras throughout the 20th century, the 20s, the 40s, 60s, and 70s. Touching on musical trends from those times, and Madonna got to work on the music. And while she would eventually lend her voice to the French filmmaker's 2006 animated feature Arthur and the Mimijoys, plans for the time-travelling musical were shelved, but not for all of the music she had made. After Moase, Madonna turned her attention to producer synth wizard Stuart Price, who was already the creative director for her tours. They began putting together music for the ill-fated Luc Besson musical. Of the songs they worked on, there was one particular style that had piqued Madonna's interest. She asked Price if he had anything that sounded like a future disco section that was somewhere in between Danceteria, Studio 54 and ABBA on drugs. Oddly enough, he did have some ABBA-related ideas. One late night on his way home from a DJ gig in Liverpool, a tired price heard the Swedish group's Gimme 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 played on BBC Radio 2, which gave him an idea. In an interview for the Confessions on a Promo Tour documentary, Price explained why ABBA was so important to what they were doing. Possibly. The whole ABBA sample hung up thing was 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 a bit of a sort of happy accident. I mean... The, the, like I said, she was working on the soundtrack for this for this musical that it was going to be at first. And when we were talking about doing the dance, the disco section, she said, "You know, I kind of want it to be like you know, Abba for the future." 
And at the same time, I'd made this instrumental track up that used that loop from ABBA just because I was DJing every weekend and I wanted something new to kind of take away and, and, and play. So I, it just happened to be around at the same time. And when she said, I want something like ABBA but set in the future, well, here was this track that I'd already been using in clubs and I'd seen the kind of response. So it was just, I don't know, sometimes, you know, like I say, happy accidents and coincidence and things fall into place at the right time and that track was around at the right time. And I think that's why that became the, the starting point for the record. Price played the song for Madonna, who on the spot began singing, Every little thing that you say or do, I'm hung up, I'm hung up on you. And just like that, the duo decided to make a dance record. Dance music was nothing new for Madonna. She holds the records for most number one songs on the US Billboard Dance Club Songs chart with 50. That's 5-0. Not only that, she's also the first artist in history of the charts to have a single reach number one on the Dance Club Songs chart in five decades. The 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s and the 2020s. So I suppose she was qualified to make dance music. And the same with Stuart Price, who made his own dance music under the name Le Rhythm Digital and has produced tracks for Kylie Minogue, Pet Shop Boys, and Dua Lipa. I tried several different things when Stuart brought me music, Madonna said to MTV. And it was like divine inspiration. It just clicked. Like, this is the direction of my record. That's what we intended, to make a record that you can play at a party or in your car where you don't have to skip past a ballad. It's non-stop. But despite their excitement, dance music was experiencing a real slump in America. After undergoing a renaissance in the late 90s, thanks to Electronica, which Madonna was part of. Ray of Light, anyone? Dance music and the club culture had taken a bit of a nosedive when the mid-2000s arrived. Naturally, that didn't phase Madonna. So they got to work in Price's illegally built studio up in the attic of his Maida Vale flat. The roof had a pitch, making it hard for either of them to stand up, so most of the songs were produced crouched over, sitting down. That's exactly how I record Encore. Madonna and Price performed and tracked everything on their own with no outside help. Along the way, they were soaking up all different eras of dance music. 70s disco, 80s electropop, 90s electronica, and present-day club anthems, and focusing on classics by Donna Summer, The Bee Gees, Kylie Minogue, Depeche Mode, Daft Punk, and of course, ABBA. Hung Up was one of the first tracks they had worked on. The lyrics came to Madonna so quickly because she'd already heard them, In fact, she already used some of them before. For this new song, she decided to recycle lyrics from a song called Love Song from 1989 that she wrote with Prince. In an interview with MTV, Madonna admitted that she was aware of what she was doing. I did all of that on purpose, she said. I mean, if I'm going to plagiarize somebody, it might as well be me, right? I feel like I've earned the right to rip myself off. Using your own music was one thing, but using the music of ABBA, a group that rarely allowed their music to be sampled, seemed like an impossible mission that even Tom Cruise couldn't pull off. But Madonna and Price both knew how important it was to both the song and the album. That was Stuart's idea. I don't, my, I never get ideas about samples because samples cost money. But that said, if you're going to sample something, sample something from ABBA because their music is killer. From artists like Madonna, money can grow on trees. But the same can't be said about getting permission from Agnetha, Benny, Bjorn and Annie Fried to use their song. So Madonna did what she needed to do. She begged. Or at least she sent her manager to Stockholm, Sweden to deliver a letter in person to the members of ABBA in which she begged to sample their record. In the letter, she explained how much she worshipped their music and that sampling it was her way of paying homage. In the end, Benny and Bjorn granted her permission, which they even spoke about to Sirius XM. Gimme, give gimme. Give gimme, gimme. Did you ever think that, that was going to be in a Madonna song? What the hell? Well, she asked us so nicely. Did you she? Know, she through, did. Her, through seven, five lawyers? or actually? She, no, 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 no. <gasps> Herself. And, she uh, did? What did she say? Hi, this is Madonna? No, there was a nice little letter. Uh, and uh, her her assistant came over. With, I said, "We can't. How can we say yes to this unless we hear the song?" Ooh, so so she came on. over with the record. We listened to. It was a great record. It is a good recording. It is, that hung thing. up. It yeah, is. really. And she came said, over yeah, where sure. to Sweden? Yeah. So sure. So we said, "Yeah, fine." So we, she, they could, she could use it. Yeah. Permission to sample ABBA was secured, but what if they had said no? Stuart Price told Music Week that luckily they never had to think about it. 
There was no plan B if ABBA didn't clear the sample, he said. What resonated with them, I think, was that we'd taken cues from them, but we had tried to move it forward. And they approved the sample that day. Fun fact, only two other artists have ever been given clearance to sample ABBA besides Madonna. The first is the Fugees when they sampled the name of the game for their song Rumble in the Jungle from the When We Were King soundtrack. The second, of course, is 98 Degrees. Wait, they sampled Dancing Queen? Yeah, that's actually true. They sampled it for their song Fly With Me. You see, the things you learn here on Encore. Hung Up was released on October 15th, 2005. With its clock ticking intro, the song then explodes with the unmistakable sample of Gimme 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 while fusing dance subgenres such as disco, electro, and French touch. In an episode of the Song Exploder podcast, Madonna explained that hung up is about falling in love and then falling out of love, which is basically what life is about. The upside of love and then, you know, the rejection or the destruction or the end. Hung up embodies both sides of the story. The song became an instant global smash, topping the singles charts in 41 countries to earn its place in the 2007 Guinness Book of World Records. The song was met with universal raves from the press, with The Observer calling it her most wonderfully commercial single since the mid-80s. One month before its release, the song made its debut in a TV ad for Motorola iTunes-enhanced Rocker cell phone, where Madonna, Iggy Pop, Alanis Morissette, Questlove, and more tried to squeeze into a phone booth. In an interview with Billboard, Madonna explained why she chose to premiere her new song in an ad over going the conventional route of radio. I'm a businesswoman, she said. The music industry has changed, there's a lot of competition, and the market is glutted with new releases and new thises and thats. You must join forces with other brands and corporations. You're an idiot if you don't. Hung Up became the lead track for Madonna's 10th studio album, which she called Confessions on a Dance Floor, as a tribute to both her roots and her love of dance music. In an interview with Much Music's Tracy Melcher, she explained why it was important for her to make meaningful dance music. Yeah, I think I called it Confessions on a Dance Floor because people always um, equate dance music with 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 songs that are superficial, that there's no there's no meaning to, and they're not deep. and And I I I beg to differ. I think you can make great dance music and actually have um, lyrics that are about something. So hopefully, I've been able to not only make music that people want to dance to, but make music that people want to think about. And um, I think I do reveal certain aspects of uh, of my soul through the music, but I, I think I do that with all of my all of my songs in some way, shape, or form. Madonna also revealed why she chose to frame the album as a series of confessionals, saying it all stemmed back to her childhood and going to church every Sunday. Well, I just, I mean, I've always had a fascination with a confession booth because you go into this room and it's dark and it smells like, you know. Um, wood and incense and there's a man on the other side of the screen and he slides the screen open and you can't really see his face and he asks you to tell you your sins and it's there's something kind of naughty and subversive about it you know what i mean and when i was growing up and going to church you know we had to go to confession every saturday before we could have communion on sunday and i never told the priest what i thought i really did wrong it's not because i pardon exactly (laughs) Um, no, because I, I thought, my God, he knows my parents, I'll tell them. So I had to like make things up, which I thought were not so terrible. I'm sure everybody does that. Like with so many of her songs, Hung Up gained even more love and traction with its music video, which begins with Madonna rehearsing her moves in a studio as she prepares to go out dancing at night. With choreography by regular Madonna collaborator Jamie King, the video intersperses a range of dancing in various neighborhoods before culminating in the dance club. In MTV's look at the making of the video, Madonna admits where the inspiration for the video came from. Well, this whole video has been inspired by Saturday Night Fever. It's a tribute to John Travolta and that whole era, all that jazz, Bob Fosse, a chorus line, Olivia Newton-John, we love you. Um, John Travolta, you are the man. The video shoot was remarkable for a couple of reasons. One, it only took three hours to shoot, and two... It was shot after Madonna had broken her ribs, collarbone, and hand just a few weeks earlier in a horseback riding accident. The fall occurred at her country house outside of London while she was celebrating her 47th birthday with her husband and children. Now that's one tough cookie. I'd definitely call in a stunt dancer if I were her. 
Originally, Hung Up was to be directed by David LaChapelle. But in an interview with Attitude, Madonna explained that he just wanted to make the video in a documentary style. But I just did that, and I want this to be all about dance. Instead, she went with Johan Renk, but not before he had her label rep hire a truck to play the song for him in some rando parking lot. That's all it took for Renk to give up his job directing Kate Moss in an H&M ad and move on to direct Madonna instead. The video was nominated for five awards at the 2006 MTV Video Music Awards, including Best Female Video, Dance Video, Pop Video, Best Choreography, and Video of the Year. But somehow, it lost out to The Pussycat Dolls and Panic at the Disco. Really? Still, it remains to be one of Madonna's most iconic moments in the second half of her career. Hung Up went on to become one of Madonna's biggest hits and arguably her biggest of the last 20 years. The song helped Confessions on a Dance Floor take home Best Electronic Dance Album at the 48th Annual Grammy Awards, where she performed an unforgettable version of Hung Up in a bizarre collaboration with cartoon band Gorillaz. Look it up on YouTube, it's utterly wonderful. Madonna flirts with cartoons. But Hung Up has lingered in its two-decade existence. The song found new life in 2018 when Toronto musician Alex Simpson mashed it up with Cher's cover of ABBA's Gimme Gimme Gimme. A few years later, Dominican rapper Takesha released a remix of Hung Up that featured Madonna in the video, with the two of them making out in the back of a strobe-lit cargo truck. Cool, cool, cool. And then last year, Hung Up went viral on TikTok when Oscar-winning actress Jessica Chastain, for some reason posted a video of herself and succession actor Jeremy Strong dancing to it with friends in a hotel room. Now in her mid-60s, Madonna is still breaking new ground, most recently on her celebration tour that encapsulates her entire career into a two-hour concert of just bangers. Because that's what Madonna's been doing her whole career, making banger after banger, and none of them better than Hung Up. I'm Miles Galloway, and that was the story of Madonna's Hung Up. On Encore, with new episodes every Thursday. Encore is an iHeartRadio Canada podcast. Subscribe to this podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Download the iHeartRadio app for more great podcasts just like these.